Okay, welcome back, everybody. So this is episode two. I do this show, this podcast for the wonderful, amazing, great Tan Books, which is an amazing Catholic publisher. Um, fantastic books. Um, I don't just say that because they publish one of my books and I do this. It's absolutely genuine and it's um, it's an honor to be able to do this. So the, the first episode we did with Bob Moynihan, Robert Moynihan, of Inside the Vatican, and it was on Archbishop Vigano, his book Finding Vigano, which is which is a fascinating book. So, if you want to if you want to see that interview, please check it out. And we also did a tribute there to um, uh, the, the late wonderful editor of, of Tan Books, John Morehouse, who's really missed um, by me, the rest of us writers, and of course his family. So it uh, so this this is episode two, and joining me today is Steve Cunningham. We're going to talk about the Great Reset, and for any of you who think that this is something that's made up, right? Right? Oh, you got the book. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Klaus Schwab, right? Yeah, I wrote a book on it. Okay, so so you know when you when you look this stuff up on the internet and 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 the folks at Google. And Wikipedia and whatever say, well, this is a this is a you know a white nationalist conspiracy theory, you know, or whatever they say about everything nowadays, right? Cultural Marxism or you know whatever else. Okay, the guy wrote a book called The Great Reset. Okay, all right. So so anyway, we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So Steve, I, my my background on this, my kind of layout, my my outline. I want you to talk a little bit about yourself first and what you do, and then background on what is the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and then what just happened in, in over the last week or two. And then I want to hit, because um, we focus on issues of, of faith for, for the Catholics in particular, how does this relate to, to the Vatican of Pope Francis? And I also want to talk about what uh, what Vigano has has said about this, and then you know, where we are going forward. So that's that's kind of a background. So, you know, ahead of time, you know, you don't need to jump right into Francis and so forth. So, uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself and and the amazing work you do with uh, Census Fidelium, among among other places. Yeah, I'm just a little uh, little fish in a big pond. Uh, I run a <laughs> Census Fidelium was on YouTube and the uh, .us website. Basically, it's just putting videos to PowerPoint slides, uh, lectures, sermons, uh, mostly all from priests. And uh, they've been doing that since roughly around 2012-ish. Started when, uh, well, even before that, I, I was I was unemployed, trying to figure out what to do, working out at the house, doing P90X, and I didn't want to, I was coming back into the faith, and I didn't want to, just listen to anything and I saw sermons on YouTube and would work out listening to those and ran out. There's only about six at that time. And fast forward to about 2012 was uh, the movie Greater Glory was coming out and I'm a knight and we didn't really advertise it, market it well. Funny, I'm on a marketing team now. So I, I, I like, I, I do, I do that anyway. I got my logo everywhere it seems. But uh, so, I remember. So you and you you would work out to these. You must be working out a lot now. You must be bench pressing like five hundred pounds. <laughs> that, <laughs> now it's funny. Now I'm listening to these podcasts, the Great Reset podcast, and anything on it. It's I don't know if it gets me more fired up at you know early morning hours. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, so you're here and you're like ten. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, it's a way of blowing out that aggression. Or if you're running on the treadmill, yeah, you just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I hear I people. people my, I tell people, people ask me all the time, they'll say, uh, how do you write so much? Right. How do you write all these articles, and all these books? And I'm like, it's therapy, man. I, I mean, you know, it, 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 you know the, uh, that and working out. I'm the same way. I'm, I'm like a, a fitness nut. Well, and uh, my wife is, too. It, but but it but it's it's a way of kind of dealing with all this stuff, coping with the world in a way. It kind of makes you feel better, um, doing the investigating and getting this information out to people, right? Yeah. Um, and then as you're as you're researching it, some of it is so infuriating and aggravating. You literally got to go to the gym, right? You got to. 
Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Alphonsus talks about never wasting time. So I'm either reading, listening to podcasts, yeah. putting videos together, or even when I'm at work, I, I'm doing other, I'm editing a, like a ebook or something, and I'm listening to podcasts in my ear. So, and maybe if someone's calling me, I hear it from other things. So I got all this action going on, but I'm waiting for the key words. I can hear what's going on and still get get the job done and somehow retain it. But uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and where and so where where is your stuff posted then? Just how do they find you? Go to just uh, go to DuckDuckGo. Go to Google. <laughs> it's actually if you type in some stuff, I'm actually shocked that I'm at the top of some search list. But uh, it's on YouTube and it's also on the censusfidelium.us. And I'm also on other platforms like Odyssey, Library, LBRY, Rumble, BitChute, HugeTube, UGE Tube, and uh, uh, there's another one I can't remember. I'm on like seven different platforms. Because of censoring and all this, uh, I've had a couple videos right. taken down. And so I go to other where's other other places that I know that won't won't take it down. I mean, I do a thing called This Week in Tyranny every Friday. The last two Fridays, those wouldn't make it on YouTube, so I put them on other this sites. Week in, this week in what? Tyranny. <laughs> or This oh. Week in Baseball, TWIB, T T W I B. So I call it TWIT, T W I T. That was a great show, Mel Allen. This Week in Baseball. I have him leading it off. <laughs> really? Nice, nice. Well, and, and our colleague at, uh, at Tan Books, Carrie Grass, uh -huh. who um, has a new book coming out, and she just got banned from Twitter and I think Instagram, uh -huh. her book, um, The Anti-Mary Exposed, which which is an amazing book. And I, I don't know why they targeted that. I, I don't know. Why, is it because it uses the word toxic femininity is in the title? Is that why? It's it, and, and, and I mean, you know, clearly it's okay to use the word toxic masculinity, right? Oh yes, uh, yeah, yeah, but but it is. Um, it, so we're gonna do a we're gonna do a future podcast on on that, and, and for people that are watching, so Steve produces this podcast, and and he. Um, so I'm trusting you, Steve, to put you know the taglines and everything in the bottom of the screen. I got you covered. I'll put the show notes and everything together for you. All right, good, good. So that that'll be done after this is recorded and it's posted. He's so quick at this stuff. But but in this case, you're not just the producer, but you're the actual guest, because um, you you know a lot about about the great the great reset more than more than anybody I know. So so can can you try to explain to people the background? What 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 is this? What does this mean? What in the world are people talking about when they talk about the great reset? Well, this is basically if you and I've never used the following exp expression except for when I remember watching the WWF with Hulk Hogan when he wrestled for the New World Order. <laughs> this is basically the New World Order rebranded. It's and a it's, WEF, by the way, the World Economic Forum. Yes, right? yes. And, and they've I, been around. I, it's funny. I thought, I thought of WWF a couple of times. When I was, but not a WEF. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they've been around since, was it 1971? I have their first book. I didn't buy this one because it's about 80 bucks on, maybe, no, it's 400 bucks on Amazon. It's not free? They're no. Not it to everybody, you might be able to get ebook, I think, but uh, right. I didn't, uh -huh. I'm not an ebook guy. I don't, I like having the hardcore thing, like Same a here. dog ear. I mean, uh -huh. I got all their other stuff right here. Um, but this, it, here's a, a fascinating part because I got his latest book of Klaus's book on stakeholder capitalism. So and he this is Klaus Schwab, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. He say, he looks like a a villain from a James Bond movie. You a just give him, villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give him a cat, let me, he looks let me, perfect. Let me, let me cut you off for one second. Hold on. So so just so just, just to read from from the bio in in, mm -hmm. in, his, in his book. All right. So people know you know we're not making this up. Professor Klaus Schwab uh, is the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. In 1971, he published Modern Enterprise Management and Mechanical Engineering. Now, you know, that's, that's, 50, year, that's 50 years ago, all right? It gives you an idea of his age. He's been around for a while. Um, I was five years old, and, and Steve probably wasn't born yet. No, at, at no. That he argues in that book that a company must serve not only uh, shareholders, but also stakeholders. Uh, to promote the stakeholder concept, he founded the World Economic Forum the same year. Professor Schwab holds doctorates in economics, University of Freiburg, and in engineering, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, and obtained a master's degree in public administration 
from the Kennedy School at Harvard University. That's the JFK School of Government. In 1972, in addition to his leadership role at the Forum, he became a professor at the University of Geneva. He has since received numerous international and national honors, including 17 honorary doctorates, which has got to be a record. His latest books are The Fourth Industrial Revolution. I remember that, 2016. A worldwide bestseller translated into 30 languages, probably more. That one. Point. Yeah. <laughs> and the book from 2018, Shaping the Future of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. That one. So it's right out. Yeah, there you go. So, so that, that's, that's his own bio for, from, from, from his own book. And this one so, came out in June of this year, of last year. And then he's okay, got this yeah. last one that came out, was it today the second? Three days ago. Okay. What, wait, which one came out three days ago? Stakeholder capitalism. That's his big thing of changing okay. economics, which so we get into with Francis. It came out of the most recent um, uh, get together conference. That was like the one of the main topics that he wanted to. He was pushing his book, and that's exactly what uh, that Pope out. Francis has kind of merged into in the last year. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so, so let's back up again. So after, I, I just hope that I didn't take any of that from what you were going to say. No, no, no. I was going to, because in the stakeholders, they bring up the code of ethics in the Davos Manifesto. So in this book, that's the Davos basically. Davos Manifesto. Yeah, it, nice. In, this, in their first one, the page beforehand has a paragraph. I'll read it for you right here. Uh, I'll just bring out the, the key point. Where is it at? Uh, where's mouth is at? There it is. Reiterating some of the same concerns about demographics that the 18th century scholar Thomas Malthus had expressed, Malthus. the yeah. author has examined several several scenarios for the global economy and outlined the choices that society had to make to recognize, recognize reconcile economic development and environmental constraints. Now you've heard that name, Thomas Malthus, right? Malthus, Malthusian, um, yeah, it's, and, and, and by the way, I, I got to say for people that are watching this, and, and I, I promise I'm not pulling your leg here, Steve can vouch for this, I know very, very, very little about this, the Great Reset, and this is, um, I mean, I've studied communism, uh, you know, different ideologies and so forth, but this is one of those things that I've just avoided, and uh, I mean, it's hard enough tracking democratic socialism, <laughs> I mean, my plate's full, you know what I mean? So so I, I, I really, so a lot of the questions I'm going to ask do come from a position of complete ignorance. I, 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 just, I just got this. I just got this last week. I, I, I haven't even read it. Um, we had to schedule this podcast schedule for a while. But um, so, so go, yeah, go, go ahead. So I come into this. A lot of the questions I'm going to be asking come out of genuine ignorance. And a lot of them might seem too basic, but I think for those of us for whom it's new, this should be helpful, a helpful exercise. Well, you'll easily, when you get into it, you'll see from all your studies of communism how this is basically communism on a global level. Yeah. Uh, they're wanting, they use the, all the key words, equality. They want to make everything equal. Everybody, the, even though the rich has so much money, they want everyone in the poor to get that way. Not them. But everyone to get to equal level, which always goes from not lower to higher, but higher to lower. Uh, right. And yeah, this, Marxism is always for the masses, it's right. not for the masters. It's uh, yeah, it's it's for it's for the ruled, not the rulers. Right. So right. And people will say, "Wow, this Green New Deal. I mean, are AOC and these people really not going to fly in airplanes? They're going to fly in airplanes. <laughs> You're not going to fly yeah. in airplanes, right? I, I I mean, yeah, this is." Uh, you know, communism is for the ruled, not not the rulers. Socialism as well. The the champagne socialists and mansion Marxists, the Ca the Castro brothers are kings. They quite literally own Cuba. Um, the the people who run the communist tyrannies, they do they never suffer. Right? Oh, they, yeah. they do not give up their dacha and so forth. Yeah, and there's a you can go on their website, especially YouTube channel, and look up. Uh, I think it's how you say it, Yaval Harara. H A R A R I. He's got, and I'll link it in the show notes. He's got a, uh, a link called The World After Coronavirus. And this is all connected. Everything, like I said, this came out in June. Yeah. <laughs> and they did yeah, the yeah, Davos yeah, before. What the title here COVID 19, right? 
COVID-19 call on the Great Reset. So that's tied to this. Oh, yeah. So and everything I'm going to say. I don't know what Wikipedia says, but hey, saying the coronavirus is great. That's what he says. That's yeah. what he says. It's the whole point of this. And, I, and st stuff I'm going to say, people are going to think it's nuts. I mean, I've already heard that to me a couple of times, but I present them the art. I did a, I did an hour and a half presentation on it. I leaked everything, showed them all the links. And that was, you know, here it is. These guys, if you ever heard of event 201, that was the thing that came up la uh, in 2018, at the end of 2018, uh, game seeming what uh, a coronavirus would happen on the planet. The World Economic Forum, along with Bill and Melinda Gates, sponsored that event. They had their time. He had his in on this. And he met and they used this thing because it's technology, AI. They want to get in your food. You hear about bugs. There's an yeah. article that came out a couple of weeks ago about how bugs is okay for humans to eat. If you go on the WEF website and type in bugs, you'll see scores of, of links talking about how we, for the environment, you must, yeah. not them, eat yeah. bugs because, well, a cow produces so much CO2, right. but an earthworm doesn't, and they have the same amount of protein. Ergo, mm -hmm. right. you should eat bugs to save the planet. This right, right. is all about saving the planet. The lockdowns, that was about saving the planet. They, they had a, a thing about, they wanted to get, it's on the WEF website, 7.6% decrease in CO2. They got that this year, and they want to yeah. do it for a decade. There's a chapter on this. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just and they want to get it down to for 2030. You'll see the you'll see the years 2030, 2050 all the time with these people. 2050, they wanted to get down to zero carbon emissions. Right. And I don't know if you remember the uh, debates. Um, the it's last Biden. Yeah, yeah. This, for for anybody. Right. This should be immediately familiar to Americans listening right now, watching right now, with some of the language from Green New Deal and Biden and so forth. Yeah, right, ahead. right. And yeah. in the debates, remember the uh, Biden says he wants to get down to zero emissions in 2050 and end up uh, uh, eliminating uh, the oil industry. And yeah. Trump gets on him. He jumped right on. Oh, that's big news. Yeah. And I remember everyone was saying, oh, he's done. He's finished right there. The right. next day, I'm I'm at the gym listening to the first World Economic Forum podcast. I went back in time. I started beginning and went back. And 10 minutes later, I'm halfway through it, it has the CEO of BP said the exact same thing that Biden, I almost threw the phone because I'm going. A British, a British Petroleum of all places. They're in on it. They All these guys are, and there's a, there's a way that they're, it's kind of like showing the world that you're the enemy, but right. putting your money in what's the plan. Yeah. So they're right. all in on green technology, green movement. Yeah. If, if you anticipate it and you're planning for it, uh -huh. and you're then, then then you can then you can re, you can benefit handsomely. From right. It. That's part. Of it. Yeah. And, and in that debate, it was toward the end of the second debate when Biden, frankly, was wearing down uh -huh. and letting his guard down. And he made the comment on fracking, which uh -huh. totally relates to, I live in Western Pennsylvania. I mean, we we are the Saudi Arabia of Marcellus Shale, okay? <laughs> and by the way, you know, for Democrats listening, the party of the working class, right? These, these are all blue collar working class union guys. I mean, this used to be the bread and butter of your party. And, and to lose those guys who were all voting Republican for Trump, to lose them in favor of sort of Green New Deal, Democratic Socialists. This is a fundamental transformation in politics, realignment, of the Democratic Party and Republican, uh, Republican but, Party. But you're right, Steve. So at that point, Donald Trump looked into the camera and said, oh, we're making news here, right? Did, did you hear that? Texas, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Mexico. He rattled off all those states. Mm -hmm. I thought at that point, Joe Biden lost the election. Me too, me too. I really did. But it's all part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. I, I really they mentioned it in this about they well, basically in a nutshell for that, they want people to lose their jobs because they want them on the government dole, which gets into UBI, universal basic income uh, if you're, if for those scoring at home, which. Well, well, and, and, to, and to be clear, so people don't think that what you're saying there is harsh. They want them to lose their jobs if they're in those industries that these people consider bad. Uh -huh. Right. These are bad jobs. Right. 
uh, pipeline jobs are bad jobs. If we could take those guys from the pipeline and just let them build windmills, right? Well, those would be good jobs, right? Yeah, so, so they, they are. They're happy to, to they, they do want to eliminate your job if you're in an industry like that that they consider, you know, quite literally toxic. Kind kind of. They don't even want you working because it's all about the you know, robot. Amazing. Here we get into Skynet. Now, if this is... If you want to go into movies, this is like the Matrix meets Terminator meets uh, uh, the was what was the precogs, uh, the to, the Tom Cruise one, uh, oh, Minority yeah. Report meets the Matrix. And this again, you're gonna think I'm nuts. They don't want you working at all because the robots, the technology is gonna take over that industry. So example like uh, uh, Yushan talk, speaks of. Um, AI takes over the, the uh, trucking industry, which has been talked about for quite some time. And I think the Biden administration is going to come out with one in June or July, a big thing on uh, uh, AI cars. I was driving Uber for four years. That's all I heard about was AI cars, the uh, self-driving cars, etc. cetera. And uh, so he talks about how do we turn these tr this, the truckers into yoga instructors? Think, think about that. Do you know a trucker that wants to teach yoga? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Um, By the way, this, you know, we mentioned the word toxic masculinity, right? It, what they call toxic masculinity. Um, I mean, you know, we wouldn't be here using electricity in a warm room if it wasn't for guys like that that dig ditches, dig holes, do the power lines, drive the trucks. I, I, I mean, that that's, you know, channeled masculinity. For the purpose of uh, you know doing that kind of you, you still need somebody to build your building mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah. you want your starbucks somebody's got to build that building someone has to wire it someone has to do the plumbing and when that stuff gets messed up they got to come in and they got to fix it right the roads that you ride in on that you blow by in your little prius at 80 miles an hour and you know those guys that are out there working that's tough work right it, it, you you can never avoid replacing those guys and, and including, I don't care how how advanced you get technologically, um, you can't let everything be done by a robot and artificial intelligence either, right? Sometimes people still have to pound a nail. Um, and, and, and Steve, th this is this is what he means by fourth industrial by fourth industrial revolution, right? Right, right. That's that's the main his main thing that he it's the fourth industrial revolution. Great reset is the same thing. Um, and he explains is basically. Um, Again, uh, there's a video from 2011, 2012 uh, of this. It's a cartoon. And the lady gets into it. Well, my husband's at the office and it, the office is, he's got, the, it looks like the Borg. He's got this thing over and he's, he's, he's at the computer thing and he's doing all these robots, thousands of robots that he's controlling at, in his office. And he hasn't left the house though. Which is yeah. another thing about the lockdowns that keep people from driving into work. Oh, wonderful. What a great existence. Yes. Yeah. They want you on your computers at home, not driving in because why? Lower CO2. If you drive, you're now screwing the planet up. So keep you at home, keep you away from other people, isolate. Because yeah. isolation, you can't really do anything if you, if you keep, if you, you know, I don't want to say revolt, but ideas, you got to get together for people. So you got to keep people away. Um, uh, so this, it, it also, there was another document, Lockstep, back in 2010. It called it all the legacy jobs. So think of legacy jobs as in uh, grocery stores. Right. So notice you see an increase of self-checkout. Yes. No other yeah. humans. Again, tech. Um, yeah. Car dealers. You've seen a, the big thing. You Online shopping for cars. Online yeah. shopping in general. Yeah. Um, now the big guys, still, you know, they're, they're making a killer. Part of your house, I mean, right? Uh, and and, e and even you know, somebody has to go catch the fish, got the fish. Um, even if you use nets to catch the fish, you you need someone to drive the boat. Um, someone needs to milk a cow. Someone needs to butcher the cow. Okay, you don't want to use cows. Okay, you want to just use plant food. Someone needs to plant the seeds. Someone needs to pull it up out of the ground. Ask any farmer, there's a lot you can do with machines, but you can't do everything with machines. You, you, you can't escape human labor. Uh, you, you can't just have everyone sitting in their room with, with that cartoon, right? Operating all these different things. It's very unrealistic. And that's why, 
Bill is into the fake foods. You see that, the rise of that, the Impossible Burger, uh, the plant-based meats or whatever it is. Uh, it's just the fake meat stuff in general. He's got billions into the fake meat thing. Again, environmentalism. Right. They'll have the good food. It's kind of like Hunger Games. There's another movie. You see the, the capitals eating nice, good stuff, and all the rest of the people are surfs. Right. Yeah. They're starving. Sure. So and if you control the, control the food. So fake, fake meat would, would be plant-based meat, like kind of veggie burgers, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it, this is literally touches every facet of your life. It's a, it's amazing how the, and if you go to their website, wf.org, you'll see who's in on it. And then it's just a who's who from Walmart to Amazon to Legos. Legos is even involved. Yeah, There's fine. nothing that isn't involved in this. Right, right. And, and it's all there. It's all at the website. I yes. You can look it up. And, and, and also, two people use words like um, conspiracy. Well, it kind of is a conspiracy. It's an open conspiracy, <laughs> as open conspiracy. 1984 right. talks about, the author from that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not hidden. So he, here, here's a couple quotes. Um, so Schwab, you're talking about working under the cover of the COVID-19 pandemic. The entire world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies. And that's one thing that these guys do. do. You mentioned uh, my knowledge of Marxism and communism. There's a, there's a striking similarity here in this kind of this, this language, right? All, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, everything that exists. There's, there's very rarely any nuance, like, well, at least in those industries in which this can reasonably happen, right? No, it's always everything, all in total, right? Complete. Mm -hmm. And he said, every country, this is Schwab, mm -hmm. from the United States to China must participate and every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed, which reminds me too of AOC and the Green New Deal about how literally, she literally says this, every building in the United States, every building, right, will have to be redesigned or retrofitted or, or whatever. I, I, I'm always amazed at the hyperbole, the willingness to use words like all and every. Life isn't like that. Uh, but 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 that but that's but that's what they're doing. They're they're not messing around with it. And he says in regard to COVID, this is um, this is the back flap of the book. Okay, so this couldn't be more obvious. I, I have stuff in the chapter too, but the back flap. Since making its entry onto the world stage, COVID nineteen has dramatically torn up the script of how to govern countries. Really? Yeah. How <laughs> so? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it put people on lockdown and, and, and so forth. I mean, yeah, it's really torn up the script. And he mentions on page 247 about COVID. He, he speaks the truth on this. Go he goes through other pandemics, which if you're familiar with the word pandemic, it was changed in 2009 to mean zero deaths now. So the common cold is a pandemic now. Uh, let's see. Here it is. <sighs> 247? Yes. Yeah. One of the last, uh, however, at the global level, if viewed in terms of percentage of the global population effective, the corona crisis is one of the least deadly pandemics the world has experienced over the last 2,000 years. In all yeah. likelihood, unless the pandemic evolves to an unforeseen way, the consequences of COVID-19 in terms of health and mortality will be mild compared to previous pandemics. And he goes into a list at the end of tw June 2020. Uh, COVID-19 has killed less than 0.006% of the world population. To put this low figure into context in terms of lethality, the Spanish flu killed 2.7% of the world's population. HIV AIDS, 0.6% from, from 1981 to today. The plague of Justinian from a one onset in 541 to a find this period in 750 killed almost one third of the population of Byz Byzantium according to various estimates. And the Black Death, 1347 to 1351, is considered to kill between 30 and 40% of the world population at a time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then the next line, the corona pandemic is different. It does not constitute an ex existential threat or a shock that will leave its imprint on the world's population for decades. Mm -hmm. You're like, really? okay, where, where's he going with this? However... It does entail worrisome perspectives for all the reasons already mentioned. 
In today's interdependent world, risks conflate with each other, amplifying the reciprocal effects, magnifying the consequences. Um, you know, and, and nonetheless, as it says here, I, I mean, you know, the, the purpose of COVID-19 is to initiate this great reset. Mm -hmm. so, so one wonders if it's really not as big of a deal as, as Schwab says. I would probably argue it's a bigger deal than he did. Never, never waste, a, never let a crisis go to waste, as uh, Emmanuel totally. said. Totally. And in, so in the introduction, he even brings up biblical names like ACBC. In his last book, Stakeholder Capitalism, he, he brings it up again. I have this thought, ACBC, uh, after COVID, before COVID. Uh, wow. It's it's amazing what they're doing. Here's, here's an idea of... Oh, wait, I got to stop you right there. So instead of instead of using um, AD and uh, and BC and AD, or what are they using now? Current era before current. Yeah, ACE era. or BCE. But 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 he he's using um, after COVID and before COVID. AC BC. He's literally said that in both the blue book and his latest book. So 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 in that sense, it, the COVID is really the defining moment to define a whole new era right mm -hmm. right he's not talking acdc right no no he's no no <laughs> wow after covid before covid right um so yeah why not just start a whole new year zero in 2020 or something and he mentions in it in that same blue book how well let me see if i, I find the right page for it i got it right here uh, about how people think that the uh thing will return to normal here it is when confronted with this, some industry leaders and, and senior executives may be tempted to equate and reset with restart, hoping to go back to the old normal or restore what worked in the past, traditions, tested procedures, and familiar ways of doing things. In short, return to business as usual. Still him. This will not happen because it cannot happen. For the most part, business as usual died from, or the very least was infected by COVID-19. There is no return to normal in the eyes of these people. Okay, so so let's get specific. The Great Reset would, first of all, in order to do whatever that is they want to do, you're going to need major business people, the, the kind of the, the movers and shakers in the global economy, right, and, and governments, mm -hmm. right, the correct people in governments. I mean, you, you couldn't have a Donald Trump. You'd be totally against this, right? Um, so you, you, you need those people in those countries together to meet in order to do this great reset, correct? Mm -hmm. And, and this is where, I mean, to me, I'm not as worried here because I don't see how they could pull this off, frankly. Um, but, but how would they organize this? How would they get power? What would they seize? Who, who would, who would do what? Are well, you seeing it now? I mean, that's, I mean, Davos is the main place, which... They just had this their week their month their annual on they were online this time virtual last week as we're recording yeah. right yeah this January, the end of January, January twenty twenty one right and they did about eight to nine videos every day I mean I I watched all the main ones I didn't watch the ones when they had uh, Putin Putin bored me after about ten minutes and then uh, they had about ten other world leaders then Ben Netanyahu uh, Merkel. Uh, the Chinese president let it off. <laughs> He's basically talking about how the Chinese way is going to lead the way. Which, if you yeah, see so, how the... So, so Pre president Xi and Angela Merkel, did you say Putin too? Putin was... Yeah, all the world leaders are in on this. So, they, 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 I mean, they actually spoke. Right, yeah. Did, did, uh, Joe Biden did not, did he? No, he did not, no. Yeah. I mean, no. he'd just been inaugurated. He's... He's, I mean, he's all in anyways. He didn't have to. Probably was right. best idea for them not to have him on because it'd just be a bubbling, right. bubbling video. Did, was there a U.S. representative who spoke? There was U.S. people interviewed. Like uh, the last one was on the uh, world. John uh, Kerry? Uh, uh, no, John Kerry is part of it. He's yeah, already he he's on the board, basically. Right, right. But right. they had Kirsten Gillibrand and they was talking about foreign affairs, and ba which basically talked about they can't wait to go back to war. And uh, there was a representative from Indiana, and I can't think his name. He's a GOP guy, which shows that this is bipartisan. You're going to get right, it. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, You're the right corporate. By the way, the John Kerry quote, um, and, and John Kerry was former Secretary of State, and you know, he was 
going to have a major role. He's in huge in this. Yeah, he almost got elected president in 2004. Okay. Uh, quote, the notion of a reset is more important than ever before. Mm -hmm. I personally believe we're at the dawn of an extremely exciting time. And, um, and this is Justin Trudeau. And by the way, my, I got some of these quotes from my friend David Kapulian who put this together. Uh, Justin Trudeau, the, the Canadian Prime Minister. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. There you go, right? This is our chance to accelerate our, Justin Trudeau, mm -hmm. our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine our economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. So actually reimagine our economic systems, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how you reimagine free markets. The only way you reimagine them is to get a hold of them and, and control them. Because in a natural state, freedom is freedom, and, and markets that are free are free. But but so a big part of this is is getting the power to, 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 be, to be able to do this. That quote by Trudeau shows you that they've been thinking about this for a while. They just needed something catalyst to right. bring it through. And look how easy, yeah. how, ever you ever thought that we'd, you'd see the entire planet stop moving right. like it did last year. And this... Did it, right. Mm. And if you could imagine January 2020, February 2020, that... It, it, that we'd be here a year later and it looked like Donald Trump was probably probably cruising to re-election, right? And then COVID hit and changed absolutely everything. And not only did COVID lead, lead, to, lead to the defeat of Trump, but, uh, but allowed for this great reset, according to what the, what the architects of the great reset themselves are saying and advocating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you go back to Event 201 again, you'll see a lot of what you've seen played out. I mean, even the uh, the, the censoring. That's episode. Uh, that's uh, that's session four. Talks about right. how the social medias are going to take over basically and censor misinformation, what they deem right. misinformation. Right. And you can see media manipulation and tech manipulation, information tech manipulation. Um, you can already see that taking place. Mm -hmm. So again, in terms of how would how would people get their arms around this in order to orchestrate this, this great reset? Um, I still find this hard to believe, but I guess if you did it in the name of an environmental threat, right? Climate change, emissions. I mean, you really could through some sort of like global green new deal. If you really put that in place, right? If you did that in the United States, you could ban fracking in the United States. You could, you could, as as Biden did with one of his first executive orders. You could eliminate the Keystone Pipeline, right? Um, so, so you know, all in the name of climate change and 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 2050 emissions and so forth. So there are certain parts of the economy you could truly, truly control. Um, get, getting control of food, you would think would be harder, but they're but they want to do that especially with, with uh, you know, meatless meat, right? And such things as that. And you've seen that they've taken out meat industries. They burnt, they've killed millions of chickens. Uh, they've taken food out. There's a food crisis in many parts of the world because of it. I remember when this was happening, I interviewed a guy in June, July, talking about how people were starving in different sections because the food was gone. They literally right. were killing their food, uh, their food products. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's and, 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 and like Malthusianism, population control. So for people who think this is far fetched, you know, Steve, you just mentioned we just mentioned President Xi and China. Um, China, following the Club of Rome report, uh -huh. the Treaty of Rome in the late 1970s, took this all so seriously. Stuff that was done by Western Europeans. Okay, that China implemented a one-child policy, which which has been in place now for over 40 years. It's two child now in some different parts of China, but but so they literally control their population. Now here in America, it would seem hard to believe that 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 would be implemented. I pray to God nothing like that ever happens. Frankly, in Western Europe, they don't need a one child policy. They're doing it themselves. Yeah, that's right. The, the replacement level, which is 2.1 children per woman, is um, there's not a single country in all of Europe that's that's at replacement. They're all below replacement. And in America, I think the year is 2016, it's the last few years, 
we finally went below the replacement level in America for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. So, so we're we're voluntarily um, uh, depopulating. We don't we don't need the government to tell us how many kids we can have. Although, what a crime it would be if they if someone came along and said, you know, most Americans are doing their part here. They're not having a bunch of children. But families like yours, right? You have eight kids? No, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that. By the way, we, I think because we adopted too, right? Somebody's got to adopt the kids of the world too, you guys, right? Very true. But yeah, they're looking at China for a lot of their ideas. So he brings it up, China and the, U- and the U.S. in that book. And stakeholders, he basically awards China with the W, because in that one is if China wins, if the United States wins, kind of gives a scenario type deal. And what you see in China, you see they having to scan their iPhones, their tracking devices, which I, Apple will gladly tell you is a tracking device. And if you don't get the right scan, you don't get into the building. Yeah. If you don't have the right thought process, your social credit score goes down. Maybe they don't even let you have the internet if you don't have the right social credit score, you won't ride the bus. You won't have to pre- which they want to get rid of cars. That goes back in that 2010 document. Get rid of cars so you don't own anything. One of the key things that they have on the website, they scrubbed it. It's on BitChute. But it started out with, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. Yeah, right, right. Hey, yeah, yeah, right. One of the, connect to the Marxism point. Right? I knew you'd catch that. <laughs> the entire communist theory may be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. That's what it says in the manifesto by, by Marx and Engels. And, and there was a frightening poll that was done uh, just, just a few weeks ago. And Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation always puts this out too. The number of millennials who say that they, that they would support the abolition of private property is stunning. And, and the reason that they do it, you guys, is for this greater good, right? Mm-hmm. That they envision here so that that's that's how this stuff is sold that's 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 how this stuff is peddled yeah wow so and then um, that again with the uh yogi yogi whatever his name yeah we'll just say yogi he talks about i'm trying to find the direct quote but it's on the web it's on their youtube channel if you go to the wf youtube and look up how to survive the 21st century he talks about implants that go into your phone you have your your people already have the fitbit that's tracking everything. And everybody that says they're, they're not, if they go, oh, that's conspiracy theory about microchips, go to the podcast section on, on Google iTunes or at Google Play or iTunes. Check out the Great Reset podcast. The last one they did last year, number four, talks about implantable microchips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's the key, is that it's actually talked about. It's, yes. it's actually advocated. There, it's actually on, on the record. So, um, you know, we're not nuts, right? We're reporting the nutty things that, that, that they're saying there. And part of the fourth revolution is that the technology would be possible to be able to do this for somebody who wanted to do it, uh-huh. right? And, and even right now with COVID, so we're meeting people from certain industries that have been told that if you don't get the vaccine, you're gonna be fired, right? You're gonna, you're gonna lose your job. And, and you can certainly see how that would happen in healthcare, right? Although even that, I, you know, for Americans, I mean, come on, you guys, it's a violation of your freedom. You gotta. Uh, Who owns and, your body? Yeah, and, and, and also too, you, you you don't need 330 million people to be vaccinated. That's part of this too, right? Makes you wonder what's to, in it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, too. And and if you if you have any ethical objection to what you believe might be in the vaccine including you know aborted uh, fetal tissue or whatever else you might not be told that you can object especially if you're and and I my wife and I had a friend over in healthcare and and she doesn't want to get the vaccine because she's afraid that the vaccine she's being asked to take has aborted fetal tissue in it but she's not going to have any other choice her choice is going to be then you walk you 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 lose your job Probably, yeah. it looks like. There was an article out the other day. It said 74% of company CEOs are considering making it mandatory in the not-so-distant future to work. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. But this guy talks about how uh, in the not-so-distant future, maybe you're listening in North Korea to Dear Leader, whoever it is at the time, and you don't like what he has to say. 
whatever's being tracked on you, he goes, imagine a time when you're being tracked so much that your blood pressure, heart rate, and feelings are put together and sent to the Capitol, and they know exactly that you're not happy with their leader, what he said, and then you get a knock on your door that night or the next oh, or right. day after. And that's well, not that too far fetched because that happened two days ago, three last week, to a guy that posted memes in 2016. He was arrested for going after Hillary. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm watching the clock here. So we only have about 10 minutes. So um, you know, this is Tan, and Tan's a, a Catholic publishing house. And, and uh, you know, you and I are Catholics. And so we, we would, in the end, a lot of, you know, our worldview comes down to that, our Catholic mm -hmm. worldview. We're, I, I'm hearing some, some potentially troubling things, and to be honest, confusing things. It's hard to know, separate back from fiction. Uh, where's the Vatican on this issue? Where's Pope Francis on this issue? I know you paid special attention to that. Sadly, they've been with the WEF since he took office, took the, since he took the seat of Peter. Since um, 2013. Cardinal, uh, was it Terzelli? Remember, Terz the World Economic Forum goes back to 71. Like right, right. Saying. Since he's been at the seat of Peter, they've he's been Turkson. He's been there every time to give their blessing. Uh, his Cardinal Turkson. Right, right. Uh, Francis just met with people from, uh, they called it the Guardians. It was the whole Rockefeller. I, everyone was losing going, oh, did Pope just come on with the Rockefellers? Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that was really weird. The, 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 it's the Guardians of Capitalism group, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I knew nothing about that until about four weeks ago when a reporter asked me if I would comment on it. And and I, I didn't, I couldn't, because I didn't know about it. So, so that, so, what is that? That's. Can you explain that with the, who they are? In layman's term, is just the is a bunch of rich. I mean, we're talking rich and powerful, the top dogs in the world, and right. the, and with Francis, and it's he writes about in his Let Us Dream book a little bit about it. And it's all around environmentalism and stakeholder right. capitalism, and they and, mentioned and by the way, they're, they're not all. I, I, I know a number of names on that list. They're not all a bunch of socialists and commies, all right? I know some good people on that list, mm -hmm. uh, free marketers, um, but but it, but it's kind. Of, I get they're they're from the kind of um, international business community, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So and so it's not a completely stacked group, right? But but it, but it's a group of I well, to use it to use Schwab's stakeholders, right? Uh, people of influence. And they mentioned and stakeholder guardians, capitalism. Guardians of capitalism, right? Are, are they kind of chosen, anointed in some way to try to make capitalism better, right? But really in accord with this plan. It's words matter. Yeah. So what they say capitalism isn't what you're thinking. It's, again, okay. it goes to stakeholder capitalism. It's his, his new brainchild that he's bringing out. It's all in the, his latest, latest book on it, which the first half of it is how he grew like, up in Germany. Like the word democracy, same thing. When right. They use, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, know, you know, Lenin said in the state and revolution, we favor democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, what do we mean by democracy? By democracy, we mean equality. Exactly. And That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the same thing for this. It's going to be more equal, more, they want more equality, more inclusion. LGBT definitely got a seat at the table. Uh, they want to, they keep using the poor thing, but again, it's how you were talking about bringing everyone down. It, on the WF website, you're going to look at sites, groups that you're not going to think is they're communist socialists, but they're in on this program. They're, they're just not saying like Trudeau or Biden and how they're leaning on this. These guys are doing this. They're all on the same team. Yeah. And it's, Still, the the league. I was I was. I'm trying to picture like the Major League Baseball with Schwab as the commissioner, and the whole thing is about again global communism. But they're not going to use the word communism. Right. Um, right. It's kind of like how Joseph uh, Joseph's book. I forget his last name. Of liberal fascism with a smile, smiley face. Yeah, Jonah Goldberg. Jonah Goldberg. Yeah. It, it's kind of like that. Is a smile. It's a very nice thing. And one of the themes of the Davos agenda was building trust. Trust us. We're going to fix everything for you. Schwab's also talked about the next crisis is on video. 
is going to be greater than the COVID one, which would be a cyber attack. Why is that important? Oh. Guess who will take over the internet? We're right here. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and let me say too, so global communism, um, it's, it's not, it's not communism, Marxism as Marx envisioned it, or as the Soviet common turn envisioned it, or uh, it, it's, it's, it's more like a global form of, they want to say collectivism or, or, or redistributing wealth, but, but it, it's, it's a, okay, this is better. It's a global form of management, right? Mm -hmm. of, of control, right? And, and, and of, of, of which industries can be permitted, right? Um, so there might not, there, there couldn't be an abolition of private property. You wouldn't think, <laughs> at least you wouldn't think, right? But, but the, um, so, so this is more of getting a hold of and harnessing through, through certain leaders and through certain business people, um, well, the, the means of production, <laughs> right. to, to use the term, right? This, this is manipulation and control and management more so than maybe abolition but in some sense they're going to abolish it they're wanting yeah. to abolish it yeah yeah but they would abolish um you know bad energy forms of energy right mm -hmm. um pipeline fracking they would abolish you know uh beef <laughs> right mm -hmm. so there there are some forms of abolition so it's not so much complete abolition but it is complete management control right because right? they'll it's have really they'll have their beef they'll have their yeah, transportation it's about control of the means of production yeah, yeah. right yeah because yeah like as you said before they'll have their goodies we won't yeah. oh yeah they'll have their work we won't i mean the mom why do you think the mom and pop shops were all are all threatening of closure but walmart's open right amazon's right. killing it everything you notice again it goes back to the tech the drive through uh you had to stay at home so you had more uh, delivery services. You know, sure. I remember Domino's, they were testing it in Texas of uh, delivery service for pizza where it was a machine. So a machine, they'd put the pizza in the car, it would be cooked along the way to your house and a little robot dog would bring it up to your door and you'd come right. out and get it hot and fresh. She's like, back then, wow, that's cool. Now you're looking at going, Wait a minute. Way, that's yeah, good. What nonsense that is. A robot dog could not get up my driveway <laughs> and across my rock my rocky sidewalk. Um, but 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 you can see here how how COVID right for for them. They, they, ah, this could be the opportunity for a great reset. We can see how people in a time of lockdown right were able to get their food by these other means mm -hmm. right through Amazon through delivery. Through, through through other things. So it was a form of it, uh, if states, Pennsylvania, New York, whatever state you're in, can do a lockdown, can do a shutdown, right? There are these alternative means of getting things in and out of there. And what if everybody has their, their laptop or whatever else, as long as you can keep technology flowing, mm -hmm. then, then you can guide people and let them know how they can do this and how they can do what. Mm -hmm. And control what content, they, that's where big tech comes in. Mm -hmm what's censored and what's not censored, what's permitted and what's not permitted. Well, you're allowed to see what you're not allowed to see. we are allowed to yeah. do what you're not allowed to do. It, as you said, the C word, control. Right. And, uh, but as I say all this, it still sounds like... Nuts? Uh, yeah, and, 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 and people watching us are still going to think, what are these guys talking about? I, I get it. I think so I'm like, nuts. Right, you can see <laughs> the, 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 the lady or the guy turning to the spouse and saying, I don't understand. How does this look? How I can show you evidence for everything we've said. What's that? I can show you evidence for anything I said. So just email me. I did an hour and a half thing on this. And at the end of it, they were going, wow. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and most important is that if they go to the website of the World Economic Forum. It's right there. Yeah, they could get lost there for weeks just reading all the different stuff. Think just... Put your mind around this one. This is one of the, the crazy things that you can think of. VR, virtual reality, opens up new ways to communicate. This is from the Fourth Industrial Revolution. <clears throat> Instead of saying how we feel, we can fully convey how we feel to a loved one or a coworker through immersion, 3D visual and sound, and by engaging every sense. This opened a whole new world to empathy for everybody with an open heart and open mind and create a better, more compassionate society. We can also easily put ourselves in someone else's shoes but in someone else's body 
and experience what they experience. We could become African American, Latina, gay, transsexual, quadriplegic, <laughs> Jew, Muslim, and then we can return back to our original identities, better informed in a way tra- and in a way transformed. In a few years, instead. I'm sorry. You would be a day. With yeah. Identities. yeah. Yeah. All through VR. So imagine the Matrix when they shoved it in Neo's head. And that's why, just why would one this, of why many. Why would anybody be excited about that? That sucks. <sighs> it's right. So so all right. So people that are watching, we're not even saying that you know Paul Kengore and Steve Cunningham. We obviously don't want this. We're and I and I can't even say. They're going to do this. This is going to happen. Frankly, I think they can't do it and it won't happen. But the fact is there are people that want to do it, that are trying to do it, and are putting a lot of money into it and actually thinking that it can be done. And that is whatever this is. (laughs) Uh, Unfortunately, I'm going to put my soon-to-be worthless money on they're going to pull this off. Um, Yeah. They got their tentacles. It's so vast, right? (laughs) How how would you get your arm? Example. The WHO and UN is leading the cause. Anybody, right, right. raise your hand if you elected any of those. <laughs> right. We we do not get a say in any of these groups right now, and they're somehow in control. The, the, the and the whole thing about the Paris Agreement, what Biden just it puts us back in the reset. You're back. We're back in. Most yeah, of the right. states were already doing it. Like my state in North Carolina, he's all in. And you can hear some of his words, and I'm going, "That's reset talk." Um, but, there, but there are limits to what they can control. There are limits to what they can do to your life. But that said, in some areas, they, they can't really limit it. And we just saw with President Biden coming in and with one stroke of the pen, one of his first executive orders on the Keystone Pipeline. Uh-huh. And, and, if, and remember, even, even, even I follow this very closely. You can look at my articles on this in American Spectator because I'm from Western Pennsylvania. And to see these young guys in Western Pennsylvania, who used to be their fathers and grandfathers would, they play high school football, they graduate at age 18, and then they go straight into a good paying job in a steel mill or a place like that. That disappeared for 40 years. Well, it's back. They're now building into fracking and industries like that. So Biden, at the least, when Biden was playing with his language and his statements on this, would say, well, I'm not going to ban it, right? But I would, I would not want to give new licenses on whatever, whatever, whatever. It would be like a phasing out. So eventually, then the phasing out fits with the template of like 2050, mm-hmm. right? So at some point, those, those, those jobs would disappear. So they can control your life that way. So there are things of, about you and your life and what you do that this can be controlled, uh, you know, under things through climate change, Green New Deal, and and uh, Paris Accord and so forth. And and for the United States, it was crucial to get Trump out and get Biden in to be able to do that. And it's, by the way, Biden's moderate compared to com, compared to some people on the liberal left of the Democratic Party. On right, right. It, it, I no, no, maybe they underestimate the human spirit. As you see in Italy, they're fighting back. Vienna, they're right. fighting back. Ireland, they're fighting back. You don't see that in the United States yet. I don't think we've been hit hard enough we, we got too many them. distractions. Yeah. When, when, I, when I told two people, um, two friends of mine who are very politically savvy and and know all this kind of stuff, usually that I was doing this podcast today, they didn't know what the group, they never even heard a great reset. They didn't even know what it was. That's why I was happy that Vigano wrote about that in that letter. I read it. It didn't really, for me, it was kind of like, all right, well, that's 101. It, but it got many people talking about it in our circles. We saw uh, like Father Matt Gordon did a video on it. Right. You had pot, you had video, you had blog write-ups. I even saw secular guys that I follow who this is where I found that because you're not going to follow up from the church. Secular guys going, a Catholic bishop Cardinal, spoke against the reset. They were jacked. They hate us, but they were jacked about a, car, a, a bishop of the church speaking right. out because they even if they don't like us. The church leads the way. If right. we want to win this, the church has to lead the way out of the darkness. And we could fight. We could win this if the Holy Mother leads us. Cardinal Burke did a sermon against it. People will follow if the clerics come out against it. Right now, as they say in the Vent 201, it was like it was session three or four. 
They need to get the clerics involved. And even with the poke, the jab, they need to get the, the clerics involved to help push that agenda along. If the clerics would start preaching against this stuff, instead of being, as I as one book called Propaganda by Jock, I, uh, where is it? He, they calls him the evangelist of the, prop of the propaganda. It's, it's, we we got to fight back. Um, now, pray, hope, don't worry. Yes, our home's, our home's heaven, not here. These guys are going to try to make your lives completely, absolutely miserable. And that's putting it nicely. So, yeah, not too many people know about it. Um, sadly, after the Vigano letter, it went away. Nobody talked about well, it again. I, I got to tell you that when when um, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, who was papal nuncio to the United States, all right, no slouch, but when when I saw him mention Great Reset, I know certain Catholics who thought, oh, this is proof that Vigano has lost it. Mm -hmm. This is proof that Vigano has become a crackpot, right? But the other people on the other side, you're right, they said, wow, this is great. There's, a, there's an Archbishop paying attention to this. Now me, what it caused me to do was was try to educate myself about it because you know I I, I, I don't like to close my mind off to something just because I haven't heard of it. You, you, you know, just ignore it and assume that it's. You, know, you have to do your research. And the easiest thing with this, like you said, just just go go to their stinking website. And look. They have look. Grover from Sesame Street on yeah. there trying to indoctrinate kid Grover. Right. Sesame, how Sesame Street can help kids grow in the Great Reset. Uh, yeah. You just want to wring their heads out. People read all that stuff. Go to the World Economic Forum website. Um, you know, check the website. Communist Party USA, Democratic Socialists of America, People's World, you know, all these different things. Go to their own literature. If you, really, if you really want to know what they believe, go to their own literature. You don't have to read what somebody else says about it. You read what, what they write. And, uh, and go to the website of Tan Books as well. <laughs> Get the devil and Karl Marx because you know that's a great one. As well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and look for look for Robert Moynihan's book, uh, Finding the you know it's fascinating. All right, I'm watching the clock. I've already gone over. I went longer than I said I was going to. I try to keep these within an hour. Actually, maybe this will be right out of about an hour. But um, Steve Cunningham, great stuff, good stuff, and. And we're going to come back to you as our kind of uh, our beat reporter <laughs> for, the, uh, for the Great Reset Conspiracy. We'll be coming back to you periodically and you can give us updates on the latest insanity. <laughs> that's, that's basically the way to insanity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, if, and people out there watching this, if you're still confused, well, you know, so am I. I you know, I, uh, but, but no, in serious, in all seriousness, this helped. Uh, and, and it's um, it is hard to get your arms around. It's hard to get your mind around. But mm -hmm. but um, this exists, and this guy's trying to do it again. This isn't a book by somebody else about it. This is the book by the guy who's doing it. All right, all right, Steve. God bless. Thanks for all you do, and come back again soon. Paul, you're welcome. Yeah, no problem. All right, take care. Again, in a month, we'll be doing another podcast and. These are posted, and Steve is going to put up there where they're posted. So check these out, and we hope to continue to give you more worthwhile podcasts. These are monthly in the, in the months ahead. All right, thanks. Take care. God bless.